So, Mr. Roosevelt, to begin with, what can you tell us about your childhood? Well, I was the only child of James Roosevelt and his second wife, Sarah. I had an older brother named James Roosevelt Roosevelt. My family was distinguished themselves in areas other than Bolivia. At age 14, I entered to the Gordon School, and it was a small boarding school in Massachusetts, which prepared of wealthy and prominent families for college. Before entering to Gordon, I had a series of governors and tutors. Well, that's interesting, but what was your first job? In the autumn of 1907, I became an apprentice lawyer with a Wall Street firm. It was a typical arrangement at the time, no salary, the first year, and then a small one to start. You have told us about your education before college, but in which university did you study? After graduating from Gorton, I entered to Harvard University. I was an editor of the Harvard newspaper and received my degree in only three years. And what were some of the most important moments that you lived in college? I was a member of the Alpha Phi fraternity and I was engaged with Eleanor Roosevelt that was my fifth cousin. Well, I'm pretty sure that most of us didn't know that Eleanor was your fifth cousin. Yes, she is the niece of Taylor Roosevelt and we married on March 17 of 1905. Interesting. Now going to your political life, you were president of the US and after you were Senate of New York, right? In 1910, I was invited to run the New York State Senate. In 1912, I was re-elected and served as chair of the Agricultural Committee. Passing farm and labor bills and social welfare, as I support candidate Woodrow Wilson, I was rewarded with an appointment as assistant of Secretary of the Navy. So this is how you gain experience in the business, dealing with the people. But tell us, how was it dealing with the Great Depression during your first years? I ordered the temporary closure of all banks, and I reformed a brain trust of economic advisors that do the alphabet agencies such as AAA, CCC, and NRA. Other agencies insured the bank deposits and regulate the stock market and provide relief of the unemployed. Well, thank you, Mr. Roosevelt. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Eleanor. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Well, we want to see some questions about your husband and your life you're going. Um, to start these questions, we want to know if you were involved in political issues. Yes, after my husband suffered a polio attack in 1921, I stepped forward into the political world. Is it that you were involved in your husband's business? I don't think so, but I really think that I changed the role of the First Lady. I showed the world that the First Lady was an important part of American politics. I gave press conferences and I, sp I spoke out for human rights, for women's issues, children's issues, and working on behalf of the League of Women's Voters. I wanted to focus on helping the poor people in the country and stood also against racial discrimination. Whoa. I really think you will re remember for doing all that being a woman. You know, these days we women are sometimes judged as inferior. I have one more question for you. I hope it doesn't annoy you, but I understand that there were some difficulties in the relationship between you and Roosevelt. Is that true? Actually, yes, they were. I once hired Lucy Page Mercer as my social secretary, and then in September 1918, I found out that she had been sending letters to Franklin, like love letters, and I said that I said to him that I wanted to get a divorce, but he said that no for political reasons because he wanted to keep a good image. In the end, I agreed to preserve our marriage, and Franklin promised never to see Lucy again. Well, thank you, Eleanor, for being with us tonight. No problem. Hello, Anna. I want to start by asking you, what do you think were the greatest accomplishments for your dad? I think the way that he led the country through the Great Depression and the World War II. 
Moving on to his polio. Why was the, his paralysis hiding from the public? Well, mainly because of political reasons. We were afraid that people would reject him as a ruler because you know how people think that a disabled person cannot perform this kind of responsibilities. Well, that's so sad. I honestly don't think that way because he is still the same person. Okay, so are you involved in your father's career? Um, I moved on to the White House to serve as an assistant and um, during my mother's frequent absences and I also accompanied my father to the Yalta conference. Okay, Emma, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.